Well, good morning, everyone. Um, they asked me to introduce the uh, the webinar speakers this morning. Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you for braving the weather. Uh, it's not very nice out there this morning. Uh, so, King's Agri-Seeds, a um, couple years ago, started uh, working with a German company called DSV, uh, and they are primary breeders in um, many different crops. Um, of most interest to King's was uh, forage grasses uh, and cover crops. So, um, we made arrangements in working with Faye to uh, have uh, two of the uh, primary people that we work with at DSV to do a presentation on their on their cover crop research and their cover crop program, uh, which King's uh, introduced uh, this past summer uh, here in the in the U.S. Um, it goes under the Terra Life uh, brand name, and <coughs> I'll explain more about what what that all is and what they do. Um, so we have with us uh, remotely from Germany, um, uh, Heino and uh, Matthias from DSV, and I'll let them take it from here. So go ahead, guys. Good morning, I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, at first, thank you to, uh, to, yeah, to join the meeting, even with uh, quite bad weather conditions. And thank you very much uh, for the invitation uh, to host this, uh, this webinar. It's, uh, yeah, as Rod already mentioned, we have this, this collaboration with Kings and uh, for for a few years now, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's very nice to to give this this webinar today, uh, and we will try to give you a deeper insight into uh, yeah the function of, of cover crops, um, what they can accomplish to uh, to uh, soil uh, to soil health because I think that is your main topic today. It's soil health beyond beyond basics. Um, at first, a few um, yeah, a few information about the uh, Deutsche Saatverehlung, the company we are working uh, for. Uh, we have around uh, 700 employees, um, and we, uh, we are one of the uh, leading plant breeding companies in in, in Europe. Uh, we have quite a long tradition, uh, founded in um, uh, 1923 as a farmers cooperative. Uh, so we have uh, in about yeah four years our 100 uh, 100 year. Uh, anniversary, and uh, what is interesting, and I think it's a uh, uh, yeah um, very unique for 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 DSV is that we are combining uh, research, breeding, production. So all the all, we we all also do the seed production for all of our crops, advisory service um, and sales. So uh, we, for that reason, we are also known as uh, yeah, a rotational thinking company in in. Um, uh, uh, as, uh, as a breeding company. And we do all those things for forage and turf grasses, for, for legumes, oilseed rape, which is one of our uh, yeah, important, most important crops in Europe, uh, the cereals, corn, uh, and cover crops. And today we want to talk about our uh, Terra Life program that was um, yeah, founded in uh, 2007 uh, in, in Germany. And what I also would like to add is, uh, as I, uh, when I'm um, correct informed that most of you are organic farmers, that most of our products are also uh, available in, um, yeah, in eco quality. Um, in the next slide, I would like to give you an overview of the challenges we are facing in modern crop um, production systems, because yeah, that is more or less the reason why we have to have to focus on on soil healthy. Um, we have to observe uh, stagnating or even declining yields in the last uh, decades. For example, for, for winter wheat, we had increasing yields uh, from 1950 to 1919 due to optimized management systems and uh, yeah, uh, mineral fertilizers. Uh, but um, in the last two to three decades, we can observe um, yeah, stagnating uh, yields. Um, yeah, the question is, we are we are doing forward, um, yeah, breeding and and also have new new uh, machinery on the field. But what is the reason why the, the yields are not incre um, increasing further on? 
then we have to um, uh, fight against nutrient losses over winter time. That is a very big problem, uh, especially in uh, regions with high uh, livestock husbandry and or intensive life, life, um, livestock husbandry. Um, and sandy soils, so nitrate leaching, that is um, yeah, a very important topic in, in, in Europe at the moment because we are getting more and more uh, restrictions on, uh, on uh, fertilizer applications. Another topic is um, an increased emergence of, of diseases, uh, paras uh, parasites and weeds. Uh, yeah, for example, um, uh, foxtail in, in uh, cereal rotations or uh, um, a corn borer in, uh, in corn. So uh, that can be observed over the last years uh, that we get more and more problems with those um, diseases and parasites and the loss of, of, uh, of biodiversity. That is a topic that is becoming more and more um, um, yeah, on the table in, in Europe because also on political level, uh, uh, the discussions are becoming bigger and bigger because um, yeah, uh, the, the crop rotations are becoming more and more, uh, more close and uh, we, we can observe that uh, we, we, we lose insects and that is a disadvantage because uh, many of those insects are antagonists for, for the parasites uh, and we have, to, yeah, we have to stop the loss of biodiversity. Next topic is that we have uh, stagnating or even declining humus contents and that is yeah, one, one, uh, one of the keys because the humus content is the, is the basis of all the uh, crop production. Um, yeah, we will hear more about it in, the, in further slides. Um, but that is also a topic um, or problem we have to face. Um, yeah, and uh, due to, um, yeah, I think it's, it's uh, partly influenced by the uh, climate change. We, we get more rainfall in, in autumn and, and spring. We get more and more problems with sludge formation, erosion, uh, and uh, yeah, soil compaction. And all of the, uh, those um, challenges are more or less connected uh, to um, the quality of our soil. Yeah, and that is also the key to handle all these challenges. Um, if you have a healthy biological active soil, which is deep rootable, we can see in the, in the uh, left picture, then we can have uh, very intensive uh, rooting systems which stabilize our soil aggregation, with, uh, what can be seen in the picture in, in the uh, bottom on the right. Uh, and we can, yeah, we can imagine that such uh, uh, soil can um, buffer a very extreme uh, environmental, um, um, and environmental impacts. So if we, if we take care about our soil, then we can, uh, yeah, we, we can ensure that our um, uh, cropping systems um, will be stable in future. Uh, the question is, what can cover crops accomplish to soil health? And um, yeah, in, in, in the center, we have the soil health and soil health is in, uh, influenced by chemical, physical, and also biological uh, parameters. And just, just if those are uh, well balanced, uh, we can increase the soil productivity. So uh, then we have a good so a food quality and a good environmental quality. And I think both is very important for, yeah, for uh, our survival. And cover crops can uh, affect all three of those um, parameters. For example, the, the soil physics. On the, on the left side, we can see that roots can stabilize our uh, soil aggregates. So we can see in the picture that uh, yeah we have a very uh, very stable uh, soil. So we can imagine that such soil is yeah we won't have any erosion effects, and uh, the soil has a um, higher bearing capacity. So uh, even a heavier machinery can um, yeah can drive over without a, a, a big uh, damage. Um, furthermore. The soil cover regulates our soil temperature. So here we have a, a picture from my colleague taken last, last summer. On the left side, the field is plowed, and on the right side, it's covered by a cover crop. And uh, we, we can imagine if the, um, the sun is shining and all day long on a very, very um, yeah, dark, uh, uncovered soil, the temperature rises and um, here is a very yeah it's it's a very 
um, nice to see that if you have a temperature below a 7 degree Fahrenheit, 100% of your moisture is available for plant growth. Um, but if your temperature uh, rises, uh, more and more of your moisture is lost by evapotranspiration uh, and you have less moisture for your plant growth. And what is, I think, even, even uh, more important is that also your soil life uh, will die off because uh, when you reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit, your soil bacteria die off. Now you think, um, oh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, that's uh, quite high, but if the sun is, is burning a whole day long on a, on a dark uh, cloud soil, I think 140 degrees Fahrenheit are easy to reach. So that is one aspect cover crops can, um, yeah, uh, can positively affect. And then the soil biology. So cover crops uh, deliver food and a green bridge for our soil life um, over, over the winter time. So if, uh, for example, for the macro uh, fauna, the earthworms or beetles or um, spring tiles that needs also, uh, they need also food over winter time in, in, in autumn and spring. And mycorrhiza fungi, um, yeah, which um, uh, build this uh, symbiotic relationships to the follow-on crop, they also uh, can just survive if they have food or if they have green biomass roots over winter time uh, to, um, yeah, to take up um, sugars from the plant. Um, another point is that other microorganisms, fungi, uh, bacteria or algae, they build bridges between the uh, primary soil aggregates, you can see here, and the microorganisms, they build these, these bridges. You can see also a picture here, uh, these white strings, which are built up by, by fungi, and they stabilize the, the soil. And yeah, you can imagine that those um, aggregates uh, are very water stable, so the water infiltration uh, will be much, much better. So um, we, um, we can see that the cover crops act on, on physics, on, on biology and also on, on chemical um, aspects. For example, uh, here we can see um, th the effect of root or of the rhizosphere of different plants. On the left side is uh, uh, acidic. It's uh, the, the, yellow, um, um, the yellow part. And the right side, uh, the purple part is the alkyne, alkaline uh, um, environment. And uh, it becomes obvious that, that, uh, that uh, different cover or even normal crops. Here we can also see uh, the, the fava bean and, and, and um, this, this is maize or corn uh, lead to different rhizosphere pH values affecting the availability of different nutrients. So for example, um, um, in, the, in the lower pH environment, uh, the, the mobilization of, of phosphorus and zinc is, is much better. So the plant availability is, is much higher in, in this um, in this um, env environment, but uh, for um, most of the, um, yeah, or here's boron and, and um, uh, monodine, uh, but also, um, yeah, for example, nitrogen is more available under, under neutral or, or uh, alkaline uh, conditions. Uh, so the different uh, rhizosphere um, pHs have a, have a huge impact on, uh, on the availability of, of nutrients. So it becomes obvious that just if uh, we can, uh, um, yeah, if we can um, trigger the, the physical, biological and chemical uh, parameters, um, then we can really um, yeah, increase the organic matter. And the organic matter is the, the storage for water uh, nutrients um, and is yeah it is the, one of the key parameters for for soil health. Um, what I want to um, emphasize in the next uh, slide is uh, yeah I think it's it's the the most important um, um, uh, yeah um, the most important um, yeah task uh, cover crops have to have to fulfill when uh, when looking to soil health. Because um, after uh, harvesting the main crop, the cover crop takes up the, the, um, the energy from the sun, uh, transfers it uh, via photosynthesis, 
And what uh, uh, many people are, are not aware is that a, a, a big portion of, of this energy is um, uh, transformed into different um, uh, components. Uh, we will see it later. And a big part of it is, is uh, uh, yeah, I, I will call it pumped into the soil, so released to the, to the soil. Um, here's an example. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it was investigated for, for, for corn. Um, but it, it does also, it, it's also um, yeah, a general topic for all plant species uh, that uh, the exudates release carbon, uh, energy, uh, enzymes, um, uh, vitamins, um, acids and minerals. And so the, the, the plant uh, actively feeds the soil. And here uh, for corn, for example, over, uh, on average over the whole uh, growth period, 25% uh, of the um, sun energy is uh, transferred into those components and released to the soil. And what is very interesting is that it is not the same um, proportion over the whole uh, growth period. If we look to the next figure, uh, in the end of the vegetative period, it is nearly 60% of the uh, of the uh, energy uh, taken up from from this or uh, transferred by photosynthesis which is uh, released to the soil uh, as root exudates and what is the reason for it the plant is preparing uh, the soil for seed setting so the, the the main objective or aim of a plant is to set seeds for yeah um, for the next generation and for that reason the plant um, prepares the soil to ensure to have all the nutrients available uh, during seed setting. And this is an, an aspect that we could, yeah, or we, 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 we have to or should use uh, via um, cover or catch crops because all our catch or cover crops also um, yeah, release those, uh, those root exudates and we can use it to prepare the soil for the following crop. Um, yeah, and this is a, a it's a microbial hotspot. So um, within this this rhizosphere, uh, or um, yeah, by uh, which is influenced by enzymes, the mic uh, the microbial activity is hundred times higher compared to the surrounding soil. Um, another aspect is uh, that we can actively uh, um, yeah have an effect on repelling uh, pathogens uh, because we promote antagonists. So we always will also have the pathogens around, but as long as we uh, keep the, the uh, antagonists alive, uh, the pathogens will not uh, be the main problem. Um, yeah, and what is important, those uh, exudates are highly depending on species. So the, the next slide shows uh, a pure stand of cover crop. So that is the easiest way to grow a cover crop. It was uh, done for, yeah, uh, very often in, in uh, the last decades in, in Germany or Europe to grow just um, yeah, um, mustard because it's, it's, it's cheap. But the disadvantage is that we have a very unilateral plant architecture above the soil and below the soil surface. So the, the, the uh, roots are all the same. So the root architecture is the same for all the, uh, the plants. Uh, and we can see that um, a um, huge part of the soil is not uh, penetrated by, by, the, by the roots. So here the, the water and nutrients uh, can get lost and we do not have the positive uh, rhizosphere effects in this, in this area. Um, another disadvantage um, um, is that um, yeah, if we have this, this um, unilateral or uh, one dimensional plant architecture, um, the biomass um, is not, yeah, it's not that effective in suppressing weeds because here the, the sunlight can go through um, easily and um, yeah, um, volunteer weeds can pop up. And yeah, that is also not just a, a theory. So if you dig out uh, the, the um, mustard plants and observe the roots, it, it looks similar to the, to the scheme. Um, yeah, and we have to be aware that uh, different species, uh, especially in cover cropping, fulfill highly specific uh, functions. 
And I just want to give an, uh, a few examples to, uh, yeah, um, to, to um, show how, how um, broad uh, it is. So, for example, here we have Facilia. This, this is a nice uh, purple um, um, uh, flower. Um, it is a very deep rooting cover crop. <laughs> it has a positive effect that it can mo mobilize um, inorganic bound uh, phosphorus in the soil. Um, it is a mycorrhization promoter. That means uh, it, uh, the mycorrhiza fungi, um, yeah, they, they can uh, take up the, um, the sugar which uh, they need for, to survive over winter time. They can take up from the, from the uh, roots of the fascia. Uh, and what is very important for, uh, for rotations is that it is neutral in crop rotations. So if there's no relationship between fascia and our main crops like corn, all the cereals, um, or also the root crops. The next one is uh, black oat. I think all of you know it, but uh, it's interesting to see that, uh, to, to be aware of the function. It's more uh, a shallow rooting crop. It is, it has an effect on, uh, on uh, uh, yeah, it, it can reduce nematodes. Um, and it has also a uh, allelopathic effect. So the suppression of weeds by, by root exudates. Uh, that is something that black oat um, um, yeah, uh, can, um, can contribute, yeah. Then the common vetch. The common vetch um, is also more shallow rooting, but it is a very good tilts improver. Um, another important point is that, yeah, as it is a legume, there's a nitrogen, nitrogen fixation. So that is also important to, to add yeah, one of our key elements for, 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 for a cropping system to add more nitrogen, especially in, in organic uh, farming systems. Uh, when we are not allowed to, uh, to apply mineral fertilizer, it's, it's only, always good to add uh, legumes uh, in, in cover crop mixtures. And what is also interesting, most of, uh, or, or many people are not aware of it, is that uh, common veg has an antibiosis effect on uh, Streptomyces scabies. It is a soil-borne pest in crop, uh, in root crops. So, um, yeah, that is uh, another uh, important advantage of, of common veg. And um, yeah, one of our new components um, in, in cover crops is, uh, is the Abyssinian cabbage. Um, it is from the uh, originally from the Orient, and thus it is very uh, drought and heat tolerant. Um, yeah, due to the large um, leaves, it has a very good ground cover. So weed suppression is is uh, is ca can be easily fulfilled by by uh, uh, Abyssinian cabbage. And it roots down to uh, nearly two meters, and thus it has a very good use of the available um, nitrogen. So uh, all these species, or also varieties, uh, have a special architecture of the green biomass above the soil, uh, the soil surface, and also the roots have a special root architecture, and they release uh, very different root exudates. And for that reason, it is interesting, or it is, it is important uh, to combine different species. So diversity is, uh, is the key to optimize, uh, I would, would like to call it the, the mode of action of your cover crop. Because if you combine the different uh, species, you have uh, different um, rooting, uh, root, uh, rooting systems. And so you can uh, penetrate the, the total, the whole soil layer. Um, the rhizosphere uh, will, will reach all the soil layers, and uh, you have also a, a nice diversity above ground, um, and that leads to a better weed suppression. And it is a kind of risk management because if you go for just one species, um, if you will have an, an, an environmental condition that are not, um, yeah, that are negative for this, this single species. Then it might die off, but if you go for a mixture, yeah, all the the, the components, all the species are adapted to, to different environments, and yeah, you will you will always have um, yeah a, a part of the of the mixture that, that will uh, ensure your cover crop or your your cover to um, reduce um, uh, or suppress weeds. And another positive effect is that you increase your leaf area index and um, 
thus uh, the energy of th that is um, delivered by the by the sun can be uh, taken up much more efficient. So, and if the sun energy is uh, yeah, is transferred more efficient. We also have a higher, um, yeah, a, a higher amount of, of um, root exudates that can be released to the soil. And also, this is not just just a, a nice picture. You can also see it if you dig out such a, um, a, a mixture in uh, in the field. So, for for a clover here, the um, uh, common radish. Um, we can see the phacelia, black oat, uh, linseed, and another um, clover. So you can see all those different uh, root, rooting systems um, also under practical conditions. This slide um, was, uh, I think, two, two years ago. A farmer in, in Germany split his uh, field to test one of the Terra Life mixtures. Um, on, the, on the right side, you can see a uh, um, um, yeah, mono um, cover crop stem with, with mustard, and on the left side one of the Terra Life mixtures, and yeah, the difference becomes obvious when we uh, take a spade and look into the soil, because it already in, in, in autumn we can see here that we have a very uh, well formed uh, fine root system, so uh, very nice um, uh, soil aggregates, so. This soil is nearly prepared for for planting the next crop in yeah, uh, reduced tillage or, or no tillage, and if you do the same for uh, in, under the mustard, you can see that the the soil is much uh, yeah much rougher. Um, it's more coarse, so we do not have such a nice uh, rooting system because we do not have the different um, yeah rooting systems. They cannot interact and it becomes obvious that, that the left rooting system or the left um, soil tilts is much nicer for, to, uh, it's a much better seed bed for the following crop. And other nice tool we use in, uh, in our uh, company is that we grow all the different crops in, in rhizotomes to learn about the different um, root systems. Here, for example, from left uh, field P, uh, the linseed, here we have the, uh, the, the tillage radish compared to a common radish. So you can see quite different uh, rooting systems. The phacelia, um, this is uh, Niger, uh, that is originally from, from Africa, is comparable. So from, for, uh, uh, it's, not com it's not the same plant family like the Abyssinian cabbage, but it's also a plant that is very well adapted to dry conditions. Um, and the black oat. And interesting, uh, it becomes very interesting if you grow all of those, um, yeah, of those species in the mixture in one rhizotrone. And we did that also in a very big one. It is uh, around five feet deep. And um, yeah, you can see that uh, the root, the, the rooting system is very well distributed over the whole, over all soil layers. And yeah, you can imagine that uh, the, uh, we have a maximum of, of root soil interaction. So we have a maximum of, of rhizosphere. That means that we also have uh, um, an, an ideal combination and distribution of, of root exudates. Those root exudates feel the soil life in uh, the soil life in all the different layers. Um, yeah, and they act positively um, on the availability of nutrients. Yeah, and it, it, I think it's, it becomes clear that the roots of the follow-on crop, if it's corn or, or any cereal, or doesn't really matter, it, the crop will definitely appreciate it because uh, yeah, the, the, the soil is so well pre uh, prepared. The next slide gives just an overview of all the different um, function of different cover crops in, in mixtures. I don't want to go into detail, but we have deep, uh, shallow, and tap rooting components. We have components that are uh, ideal for under, uh, to do germinate also under dry condition. We have um, components that have, that have very good effects on, on uh, soil tills. Then we have uh, nitrogen fixing um, components of all, all our, our legumes. And we have uh, silicon fixing uh, crops like linseed. 
pea mobilizing crops. We have crops that promote mycorrhiza, nematode reducing crops. Yeah, and uh, I mentioned already that, uh, for example, the black oat has allopathic effects. But in the end, the challenge is to combine the right species with the right proportion per species in a practical working mixture. So it's not that easy that you just take a, yeah, a few grams of this species, a few grams of this species, throw it together and you have a, a nice cover crop. And because it's, it's not that easy to, to figure out which, which is the right proportion uh, yeah, and uh, which kind of cover crop do I need for the follow crop. Yeah, and that is what, what uh, Terra Life stands for. So it is based on intensive research. I mentioned already that uh, we started in 2007. Um, so my colleague Christoph Felgentreu in the eastern part of Germany he started to, to create uh, <laughs> this, the, the first mixtures. And um, yeah, he's doing tests or, or did tests on, on our research stations, but also collaboration with universities. Um, yeah, and it is a result of a close collaboration with farmers uh, and official consultants. And I think that is the most important point because we always try to, yeah, to, to, um, yeah, to, to act in the best way for the farmer. So uh, try to, to have a close contact to the farmer. What is the need of the farmer? Because he needs the, the right uh, um, cover crop for his system. Um, diverse. That means for us uh, to have more than five species per mixture. So that uh, has been defined in the, in the early beginning. Furthermore, well, the, the program is uh, very dynamic. So if there are any new cognitions or developments, um, so we have, uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, conferences and if we can find any, any news and new ideas, we directly share it and try to, to incorporate it um, into, this, into uh, our, our mixtures. Yeah, I mentioned already it was, it was uh, launched in the German market in 2007 and is now one of the, or it is the leading cover crop program in Europe. So uh, we have also started in Denmark, the Netherlands, France, Poland, and uh, there are a few further uh, countries, Austria, uh, Great Britain, so, um, yeah, it, 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 it was a very nice development over the last years. Um, yeah, and what is, what is uh, the key is that the program is specifically adapted to different crops and crop rotation. And that uh, what I like to show in the next slide. Um, yeah, it is, you, you do not have to read it. It is just gives an overview over our uh, current uh, program. And I just want to show that we have uh, 17 different mixtures at the moment in the German market. Um, and all of those uh, mixtures have an uh, individual composition. Uh, so it's based on the long-term experience and intensive testing. Uh, yeah, we do the, the uh, breeding on the key species uh, in the Netherlands. Um, there is our, our breeder for cover crops. Um, yeah, and we try to have a, a high share of certified seeds because quality is also an important aspect for us. Then the next question for the farmer is, does that um, mixture fit to our or to, to his rotation? So it is, uh, we have different, um, yeah, all kinds of, of rotation, but here all seeds where legumes, uh, potatoes, sh uh, sugar beets, uh, cereals, corn, and so you can see that there are a lot of mixtures for, for, uh, for different uh, uh, crop rotations. What is also important is the percentage of legumes. Uh, for you as, uh, as organic farmers, I think it's important uh, uh, to have a high percentage of, of legumes to, so you can increase your, uh, your nitrogen um, um, potential in, in, of your soils. But if you grow, uh, a, a legume may be, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about, but, but maybe a soybean or any legume in the following crop, then you should go for a, for a legume-free mixture um, because um, you do not want to have legumes previous to another legume uh, because it would be a green bridge for, for diseases. And then we have uh, 
we take care about the um, um, planting period. So we have uh, different mixtures which are suited to different um, uh, planting times. So if you uh, have a long vegetation period, you, you uh, need to take uh, a mixture that is, um, yeah, that can be uh, uh, planted very early because it, it, it has a long vegetative period. Seed setting is always the key. You do you always uh, want do uh, you do not want to have any uh, seed setting in your cover crops. So now I told you a lot about uh, cover crops and it uh, looks like a very nice story, but I think you ask yourself <laughs> is it true what he's uh, talking about? And uh, for that reason, I would like to give you an insight into the research behind Terra Life. So uh, for now, four years, we have a very intensive uh, cover, uh, cover crop research project with four different universities in Germany and the uh, Gene Data Bank of Gardasleben. Um, that is um, located on, on two sites, in the northern and southern part of Germany. Um, yeah, and it will continue for uh, all in all nine years. What is the, the, the main research issue of Ketchi? So we try to answer the, the question, do diverse catch crops improve the following topics like biodiversity of soil organisms, size and availability of nutrient pools, carbon inputs into soil, nutrient fluxes and uh, subsequent nutrient cycling, soil structure and aggregate stability. And finally, and of course, one of the most important things, crop yields. And for all of those topics, a lot of uh, PhD students are working um, yeah, and analyzing and uh, writing articles. So there's a lot of work going on at the moment. And just last year, we got the first results and I will show you an, an excerpt of it. At first, I would like to give you an idea about the treatment we will see in the next slides. Uh, so we tested a, a fellow, uh, so, but we did not kill the volunteer seeds. So there was something, uh, yeah, there were some, some volunteer um, um, seeds growing. Then we have a single component, the, the mustard. Then we have a, a simple mix of, of four components, mustard, phacelia, uh, bristle or black oat, uh, and Egyptian clover, and then um, our uh, Terra Life Maze Pro mixture, uh, which contains uh, 10 well balanced components. I will show you uh, how it looks like. And that was tested in two rotations to, yeah, one was humus accumulating and one was humus degrading, just uh, to, um, yeah, to, to test it in different um, rotation systems. The Maze Pro. Um, yeah, it is. It was, as the name uh, says, uh, it was uh, created uh, for intensive corn rotations, and it contains uh, uh, acid clover, crimson clover, uh, field pea, linseed, uh, Persian clover, sorghum, uh, sunflower, tillage radish, winter rye, and uh, winter wedge. And uh, very in interesting and important for this mixture is that it is a combination of of uh, hardy and non-winter hardy components. Well, what is the reason for it? Mm, uh, maize um, is planted very or quite late in the in the spring, so um, there is a, a long period after winter um, where we can lose nutrients. So we will have we have the, the non-winter hardy components which will die off over winter, so they will start to to uh, decompose and we'll release the first nutrients in spring. And um, we, we have the hardy components, which will um, yes, uh, protect the nutrients um, until uh, the, um, the cover crop is, is uh, killed directly uh, previous to planting. And uh, yeah, the, the hardy component then will, uh, will release the nutrients very slowly and that is important because uh, corn take up most of the nutrients from eight leaf stage onwards. So that is uh, about June. And so we have a long period where we do not want to, to lose our, our nutrients and due to combining 
uh, hardy and non-winter hardy components, yeah, we have a very uh, homogeneous release of, of nutrients in, in spring and summer. Uh, yeah, another important topic is that the hardy components um, yeah, guarantee a highly uh, effective uh, or efficient erosion protection. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, we, we won't lose uh, a lot of nitrogen via leaching if uh, due to the due to the hardy components. Uh, then we have uh, um, a lot of components like the sorghum and the sunflowers who are promoting the mycorrhiza um, because uh, the mycorrhiza, uh, I mentioned already, are also very important for corn because corn is also a mycorrhiza, um, um, yeah, a mycorrhiza plant. It, it, it has this uh, the symbiosis with, with mycorrhiza, uh, which, which allows to have a better availability of, of phosphorus. And if we can uh, uh, prepare the soil and, and keep the mycorrhiza from last year alive, that is an important point for corn. Um, then it is a, a mixture which, uh, uh, which uh, has a very intensive root penetration and the new root channels then, then can help the corn uh, during drought. So in last years in Europe we have problems with uh, uh, early summer drought and uh, the, uh, we have to be to ensure that the maize uh, has good root channels uh, to reach uh, deeper soil uh, layers um, to yeah to uh, yeah, to to stay alive during these uh, dry periods. Um, yeah, and what is also in, uh, important for for corn is that you can uh, the the cover crop uh, leaves an ideal seed bed. Mm, so you can directly go for, for no-till um, planting or redu reduced tillage uh, systems. Um, yeah, and another topic we, I mentioned already that we have losses of, of insects in, 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 in Europe, or I think it's a worldwide problem, um, that um, maize grow is also a good choice to just grow a, 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 a flowering buffer stripe. So here's a, a short video. I hope that I can get it started. Yeah, it's just to for you to get a better idea of how it looks like. So here's the cover, the cover from, from Copter. It was planted in the first August in Germany and just to get, a, get, a, get an idea how it looks like. And um, yeah, after that, you can see such soil conditions um, below the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the biomass. Yeah, and I think uh, that makes obvious that uh, this, uh, yeah, um, point uh, serial matches practice, I, I would like to call it, because you can see that, that uh, physical, biological, and chemical uh, uh, parameters are, are balanced. You have this very fine rooting system, you have stable root aggregates, uh, uh, very water stable. You, I think it's, it's, uh, you can see that uh, also uh, even a uh, um, heavy rainfall can infiltrate very, very fast in, in such soil condition. And you can see uh, here the uh, residues of the earthworms. So also biological activity is quite high. Um, yeah, and here are the first uh, results from this uh, from the research project. Um, we could uh, find out that the uh, uh, that we have an improved uh, soil microorganism activity due to Terra Life. Uh, this figure shows the Simpson index. On the x-axis we have the sampling day after planting of the cover crop uh, and the Simpson index is a, yeah, it's a, it's a general uh, index for biodiversity and it was used to describe the diversity of the soil life. And we can see that the, the brown is the Terra Life and um, red is the mustard uh, purple is the mix of four, and gray or blue is the, the fellow. That uh, um, in the beginning, there's no difference, but then the uh, 
maize pro mixture showed a very um, strong increase in the in the Simpson index or in the soil biology or um, diversity, and that stays significantly higher compared to the other um, treatments until yeah 140 days after sem uh, after after planting, and uh, that could also be uh, um, confirmed by another method. It is the PLFA. It's a phospholipid. Um, uh, fatty acid analysis uh, that gives an overview over the uh, quantity and quality of soil or microorganisms in soils. And here is, for example, the bacteria. Um, it's the same, the same, um, yeah, the same treatments, and the, also the sampling days on the x-axis. And it also com uh, it, yeah, it confirms that uh, due to growing uh, Terra Live mixture, we have a, a significantly higher uh, activity of bacteria. Uh, over the whole period. Um, then the, the next slide, or this slide, shows the um, uh, increased nutrient carryover. So it is the um, the um, nutrient release uh, from from the cover crop to the to the next crop to the corn. So it is the, the availability of uh, of the yeah for the following main crop, and that is. Um, yeah, quite interesting. It was it was measured directly in beginning of, of the uh, uh, next main crop, in that uh, case corn. Um, on the in the left side, we can see uh, nitrogen, then mag um, magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus. And um, yeah, the, the the red column is mustard, the purple column is a mix of four. And the brown column is, is the maize pro, and we can see that um, we have additional um, 18 uh, pound uh, nitrogen per acre um, when we grow or when we decide uh, to, to go for a biodiverse mixture like uh, uh, the maize pro. Mm -hmm. um, we have additional uh, 1.2 pound per acre of, of uh, magnesium, uh, 24 pound per acre uh, potassium and 2.2 um, uh, pound um, put, um, phosphorus per acre. And that sounds, uh, seems to be not that much, but especially for, for corn and the early growth, it is important um, yeah, the, um, to have a good availability of, of phosphorus because corn um, has a very weak rooting system in the beginning, and has a, but it, it has high requirements of, of phosphorus and so, uh, the, um, yeah, we have very good, um, very good phosphorus availability for the, for the corn. The next slide uh, result shows um, uh, the, the carbon sequestration. So we can, we can show that uh, diverse mixtures increase the netto ecosystem carbon production. Um, here again on the x-axis, we have uh, the, the four treatments. Um, and on the epsilon axis, the, 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 yeah, the carbon production. Here's uh, uh, um, uh, zero, and if we can see that if we uh, have a fellow, then we have we lose carbon from the system. We have a negative flux, and if we grow any cover crop, we have a, we have a yeah a positive uh, uh, um, value. That, that means that we that, that we increase our, our um, carbon content in, of, of the soil, but we have the highest uh, carbon sequestration if you we, if we have a biodiverse mixture. Um, yeah, and carbon is in the end uh, uh, very important for, for the organic matter. Yeah, and that is in the end uh, the key for soil health and uh, yeah, climate product, uh, protection, as we all need to uh, know that we should um, yeah, store as much carbon in the soil as possible. Um, yeah, now we saw a lot of um, research results and I think to, it, it is important to be aware that carbon, carbon is a cornerstone for all of the physical, bio, uh, chemical and biological processes within the soil. Um, and that means that uh, if the soil lacks carbon, um, all other nutrients are, are uh, limited because they, they won't be available. Uh, there's no, no nutrient transfer without carbon. And we could see now that we have nutrients available, 
we have uh, 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 good uh, biodiversity in the soil and carbon is available. Yeah, and in the end, it, uh, it looks like, yeah, this, this scheme, so all the, the different gear wheels of nutrients, uh, of, of uh, water, of uh, uh, soil fungus, etc. cetera, um, yeah, they, they uh, mesh with each other. And yeah, th this system, uh, yeah, it, it uh, yeah, r runs like a, like a good tractor, I think. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you can imagine, and here you can see it, that um, you have also, um, you can see it in, in the root development of the, of the corn, of the following corn, uh, directly after mustard, we have a more or less weak um, root system, while we have a very strong rooting system uh, after the, the maize pro, um, yeah, due to the, the good uh, soil preparation. And yeah, but it's also, an important point is that uh, we have to look at the yields. So these yields are not uh, the, the, uh, uh, the results from the catchy project as we are not allowed to, to publish it up to now because um, uh, one of the PhD colleagues, uh, students has to publish it. But we have other results from the southern part of Germany. Um, there were a lot of uh, trials with different farmers and we could show that um, yeah, here, um, for your information, it is the, the uh, bright, dark, uh, the, the brighter bars are the uh, nitrogen fertilization, and the darker bars show the the the, um, the grain yield, uh, the, the the yield of grain corn. Um, yeah, after growing the mustard, after growing um, uh, growing corn after Rigol, growing corn after uh, maize pro. And it's uh, one thing that we have to take into account if we have a diverse mixture, including legumes, we can reduce um, our uh, nitrogen fertilization, uh, but we get even better um, um, uh, yields. So the, the difference is in about uh, two tons. Uh, compared uh, the the uh, corn after after uh, cover crop or biodiverse maize pro cover crop compared to a to a to a mustard, so that is uh, yeah you you can also after after a few years see it in, in, in the increasing yields. So simply put, if you have a, um, 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 a monocropping uh, mustard or doesn't matter any other crop. You will have an effect, but it is more or less small. And if you go for a biodiverse mixture, the effect size is much bigger. And so you, you can uh, yeah, affect your soil health uh, much, much more and increase it. So the last slides, uh, I would like to give you an overview over the activities um, and the mixtures we, we um, have in the US in collaboration with King's. Um, at first, a short overview. We uh, we started with six different mixtures, um, all in all, twenty components uh, with different shares in this in this in these mixtures. Um, for just one example that could be interesting for you as, as organic farmers, the Enfix is a mixture which uh, has a very high um, share of, of legumes, so it will um, yeah. Um, increase your, your uh, nitrogen um, content in the soil and will deliver or uh, release a lot of nitrogen for the following crop. And all of those mixtures, um, as I already mentioned for the, for the German program are also, um, yeah, it, it, it uh, fits to different rotations. For example, Aussie rape, legumes, uh, for, I think we can include uh, soybeans in the legumes, potatoes, sugar beets, cereals, corn, and vegetables. It's uh, just an excerpt. And you can see that there are also um, um, cover crops for, for early sowing and for later sowing. So the Vita, Vitamax, for example, um, yeah, can also be, be uh, planted quite, quite late. But for us, the rule is that we, that we always need four to six weeks of vegetable period to, uh, to establish a good cover crop. And yeah, we did intensive testing last year or it is uh, the, the plots are still in, in the field. 
um, also in collaboration with Kings. So all in all, we tested on, on 11 sites. It were more or less simple uh, strip trials um, because we would like to, or we, we uh, wanted to test if, if the mixtures also fit to, yeah, to your conditions in, in the US. Um, as you uh, all know much better than, than me is that uh, you had a very wet uh, late summer and autumn and so they were not the best conditions for cover cropping. However, the results were, were absolutely satisfying. So we had a few field days and um, it was end of October and I just want to show a few pictures that was uh, in Lancaster. Here you can see the, the stripes. Uh, the planting date was the uh, uh, 31st of August, so about one and a half months after planting, it looked like this. So a closer look into the into the plots, and here a uh, very close look into the Vitamex is the uh, Abyssinian cabbage, the um, black oat, and yeah, all the different components. And what was very interesting to observe is that that we all always could find all the components. So uh, all the components we added to the mixture could also be found in the in the field. This is the second field trial in um, uh, Schulkel, uh, heaven in, uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. It was also the uh, 23rd of October, also nearly one and a half months after planting. And yeah, here is also the, the Vitamax and the Regol. You can see that we had the first frost, uh, the buckwheat died already off. But it is uh, yeah very nice cover a dense cover yeah the regol does already a very nice job yeah and here um, the third or what, uh, the, the third uh, side I would like to to uh, to show it's in, in Trubensburg where we had a big field day um, yeah it uh, was also nice nice plots uh, two months after planting. Um, yeah, here a closer look into the end fix and beat the max. And uh, yeah, when we digged into the soil, into the into the plots, we could also find a lot of soil life. And here's just uh, one one picture Taylor Fritz um, took. Um, we can see that the interaction of the rhizosphere with the soil. I think it's a, it's a nice, very nice picture and shows that uh, the cover crops do their job. And that was the last slide. I would like to thank you. And I hope it was understandable and I will not be too fast. And if you have any questions, yeah, we try to answer it. Well, thank you. Uh, wow. And our room is filled up nicely too, which is good to see. Um, so any questions here? Uh, and I'll repeat them if you want to ask. Yes. So the question was, is if there's a hard pan uh, in the soil, would it, would it defeat the, uh, some of the benefits of the cover crops? You understand hard pan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you mean uh, soil compaction. Uh, compacted, a very hard compacted layer. Yes, about, uh, usually about, you know, the plow pan. Usually it's about eight, 10 inches down. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think the, we have uh, one mixture, it's a Rigol DT, which has a lot of components uh, with a very aggressive uh, rooting system. But what is very important to know is you won't have an effect if you just grow once uh, uh, such a cover crop. It is an effect that, uh, yeah, it is a question of the system. You have to integrate it into your rotation over years and then you will, will see the, the effect. You, you won't uh, break up your soil compaction uh, just with once growing uh, a special a special uh, mixture, but on long term, I think there there will be uh, a possibility to to break up this this the soil pan. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Gleason. Okay, I got a little problem with that one. Um, so you're talking about a graph that was shown with maize. 
and that you th saw that the terror life was similar to the fallow for the biological life in the soil? Uh, that's a good question. They're catch flies. And the, the fallow shows better than before mixed. Let me uh, let you have the microphone and then you can ask your question. On the fallow ground on your test box. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, could be better, but I think, we, I, I, think I, I got the question more or less. Put, put it right up your mouth, please. Um, I think it is. The, the uh, fallow ground shows more soil life than the four mix and the mustard mix. I think that's that's it. I think. Yes. That's you it. you 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 mean that this one? This one, right? Yeah, yeah. There's an explanation. I I, I mentioned that the fellow, um, the, uh, the volunteer weeds have not been killed up, uh, so there was uh, th there was a, a kind of. Um, yeah, a kind of mixture growing was a kind of weeds that were growing, so uh, it was no, not, not just black soil. And uh, another aspect is that we could found out in the, also in this project that uh, mustard can, can partly have an, an, a negative impact on, on some um, microorganisms because of uh, yeah, special root exudates. So um, that is that is the reason for for this uh, curve. So it is it is not a um, yeah um, I know it's nicht. yeah yeah so it's it's not yeah it's it's not a it's not a black fellow. So it's it's uh, there were weeds growing, and that is that that is the reason. So. Uh, there, there was something growing, and if you have any plants growing, then you have a, a kind of a positive effect, uh, effect. But you have to take into account they are, they are growing um, um, plants, a species that you do not want to grow because it is wheat, for example. And if the wheat is growing um, as a cover crop, then you have always a green bridge um, for, for, uh, for example, for Fusarium. Uh, or for aphids. So uh, it is a, a, a kind of an effect of on, on, the, on the soil life, but it is negative in your rotation because you will have problems with, with other diseases which can be, yeah, uh, which can survive over winter. Is it, does that answer the question? Yeah. Yes, it does. Any other questions here in the room? Yeah. Um, so when I uh, look at the, the, the uh, timing of, of the plantings for these and, and, um, and the species, they seem to be, I think, well adapted to the, the middle Atlantic states where it's warmer than here. But um, I, think it's, it, I think farmers in general are going to have trouble fitting this, these, these mixes into their rotations. The only place I can think of is, is after a, a winter rain. But then a lot of times that's a good time to plant clover, which also has very beneficial effects. So I'm thinking about the trade-offs and maybe maybe we need to be looking at different different species for our, our area or things that can be compatible with interseeding, that sort of strategy. Whereas a little farther south, you could plant a bunch of these mixtures after your harvest. Is that, is that, uh, uh, does that make sense? Yeah, ma mainly uh, the, the uh, Terra Life um, um, uh, cover crops are, are planted after uh, the main crop, and it's the, the main um, rotation or the main pre crop is, is cereal, uh, winter cereals, that, that's for sure. But um, we also tested to uh, go by, uh, via interseeding, so it is possible to spread it um, maybe. Two, two weeks uh, previous to harvest with a, with a common spreader. The, the, the Vitamax, for example, is one, one um, mixture we tested. And you can spread it into, the, um, into your 
um, crop previous to harvest. Um, yeah, and that is the, uh, that could be uh, um, yeah something we should test in future. I think there's uh, also the uh, the possibility to to use, for example, the forage router is another mix that could be used as an um, interseeding crop in, in corn. So there there are op uh, opportunities, but you are you are totally right. You need a, uh, a defined or uh, at least four weeks of of vegetation period to establish such a crop. Otherwise, you 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 won't be happy with it. But I think last year results were were more or less <laughs> nice. But maybe Ross can add his experience. So you say four weeks, four weeks before frost. Yeah, so four weeks uh, of of vegetation. So, so yeah, before the first frost. Yeah. Is it Rod? I don't see Rod. Oh, do you have anything to add, Rod? Or? So I, I would just say that in general, these mixes are geared toward uh, seeding after uh, a small grain or, or possibly in addition with uh, vegetable crops that come off early. Uh, Kings has other mixes that are well suited for inner seeding and other options for late seeding, but certainly when it comes to diversity, your options get limited as you go. Uh, and, and they have, and we will do some, some more testing of inner seeding in some of these mixes in like standing corn. Okay, we have a question on This is from Randall. Um, he asked if I have a rotation of corn, soybeans, and wheat. Will the vetch and the terralite maize pro have hard seed that will sprout in my small grains? I didn't get the. How did you get it? No, I didn't get the question. Was that already the question? I, I, you should be able to press the chat box at the bottom of your screen and read the question. Uh, the chat box. Uh, right, it should be orange. If you use your cursor down near the bottom. Render. Well, I'll, I'll try again. So the, this farmer has a rotation of corn, soybeans, and wheat. And his question is, is will the vetch and the terralite mows and haze uh, mix have hard seed that was sprouted in my small grains? Yeah, no, I opened the chat. I can read it. Um, just let me give you some explanations on this. Um, uh, normally, you know, when you grow the um, cover crops, you know, there is no seed setting um, on this, you know, so there is no um, difficulty to have uh, seeds fall down in the, in, the, in the soil and that this can then germinate in the following crop. So, so see, answer, answer this your question? So yeah, we'll wait for Randall to respond with his answers. Yeah, and the, it is very important to, to stop the growth of the cover crop previous to seed setting. And uh, for the, uh, we recommend always to go for, to, to roll it. Then then you stop the growth and there, you won't have seed setting and you can efficiently stop uh, the growth of your cover crop, but you should not um, yeah, kill it off by, uh, by uh, rotor, um, uh, by Marika, because then you will lose all your plant uh, juice and you will lose all the nutrients. 
Yeah, in very warm climates, um, uh, you have sometimes problems with um, seeds falling down uh, to the soil uh, with buckwheat. Yeah? So for example, if you have a very long time um, for the um, um, growing of the, um, the, the cover crop, then uh, you can see sometimes uh, seed setting and also seed falls down of this. Yeah? In this case, you know, you either have to um, use a cover crop without the buckwheat or um, also to destroy or roll as Matthias said just to know the, uh, the, the fields um, so that there is no seed setting. Uh, Matthias and Heino, this is Rod. I'm not sure you're quite addressing the question. I think it's okay. more a uh, concern about a uh, hard seed uh, of the vetch that would have a delayed germination and, and potentially be a weed in, in a future crop. Uh, you mean the, uh, the, the the seed we are sowing? You mean? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Normally, um, um, the uh, the hard seed is not a so big a problem. You know, in the in the wedge, you know, uh, there is uh, normally a very very low percentage in which with with hard seed. This is our experience. There is more um, um, difficulties, you know, when you have clovers, you know, um, on this inside, you know, where you have um, more hard seed inside. Yeah, uh, but this is uh, very seldom that, that we see this. We do not see also in our uh, mixtures here in Europe um, that there is a lot of um, volunteers uh, um, from cover crops in the following crop. Yes, and I think the other uh, <clears throat> thing is that uh, you're not going to go directly back into a small grain crop. So if there would be delayed germination and a few seeds, that's going to uh, occur either in the corn or soybean crop and mainly, yeah, be, be yeah, going backwards back in the in the small grain. But that's right. That is a consideration uh, that people need to be aware of, particularly mm -hmm. organic, where they can't spray that out of the crop. Yeah, of course, yeah. Dan, did you leave something here last week? Yes, wow. I would like to accept that. Question I've got for you if we get short of feet, uh, could we mow this off and make baleage out of it? Uh, anything there that would be detrimental to baleage? Maybe you've never had that, but could we mow it off and make baleage out of it? This is the question, you know, if you can use the uh, um, the biomass which is produced by the cover crop um, for forage usage. This is the question what is behind of your of, of this. Yes, um, I think um, sometimes you have to watch out um, that uh, uh, not all cover crops are usable for cover crops, um, uh, for, for forages, you know. Um, when you see our forage router mixture, for example, there we have um, the grasses inside, uh, plain ray grasses, um, um, and ray grasses, and uh, Italian ray grasses, and, uh, um, and clovers. You know, this, of course, you can definitely use as a cover crops. So this is a double usage cover crop then. So it means for green manure and for forage. But there are also, of course, special mixtures, you know, um, where are certain components inside which are not so good for forage, for, for forage usages. For, I think they're about, for example, for, um, um, uh, mixtures where you have um, some buckwheat inside, you know, this is not a very good uh, forage plant. Not, not for sheep. And not, not, not for sheep, for example. Yeah. yeah? But there, there's also, um, um, I think we had in, in our spreadsheets, or Matthias showed in the spreadsheet also, the usage also as, um, as, as, um, as, uh, as, um, um, as forest mixture on this, you know. Yeah, and, uh, but I think we, I can add that we had last year a, a very surf drought in, in Europe and we, we had a big lack in, uh, in forage, forages and a lot of the farmers used the, the Terra Life mixture for biodiverse mixtures uh, because they had no, no other, other forage out in the field and uh, yeah, that, that was also okay. So the, um, the cows or um, yeah, sheep also do not really like, for example, uh, Facilia but it does also not harm them. It, is, uh, it has no, no direct negative effect. So all the species are um, uh, not poisoned, for, not, no poison for them, but they, they, they would prefer another crop maybe. This is just a, a recommendation that maybe in the future you could put a forage rating 
for if every cover crop that's what you have as to whether it's acceptable for forage and for wild animals, I think that would be helpful for people looking for that kind of thing as a possibility for a weed. Yeah, I think this is a good idea, um, uh, your comments, and um, we do this here, of course, in Germany here also, you know, so that we recommend or give an advice, you know, if you can um, um, use this also as forage, for example, if you use it as, as, um, as a, as a grazing, grazing for sheep before winter, for example, on, 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 on this, yeah? So, we may have to open up the chat box, there's another question there for you. Yeah, just, okay. just a response. Oh, oh, okay, just a response. So any questions here in Jordan Hall? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I commend you on your English. It came off very well. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't sure what Heino was there for or not. Just a pretty face? Or... <laughs> yeah, Matthias has prepared all the report, and I think that's the reason, you know, um, that he was in front of this, you know, and then I think this is, was quite good and uh, this was quite a good report that he has prepared. Yes, we really appreciated it. Um, if you get any further comments, we'll send them to you and we'll send you the link. We have recorded it, I believe. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Invitation. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you.